Hi everyone, welcome to Virtue Class this week. We are actually gonna be traveling this weekend, so we decided to film our lesson a little bit early. And today I have my daughter with us. She's gonna help me. We are in Maine and um, tomorrow we're driving up the coast to go camping for a few days. Uh, okay, go grab the apple. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about gentleness and we're going to start as we always do with our prayers. And I decided to record this sideways so that I can upload it to YouTube and it's easier to see on YouTube. Um, it will not be on Instagram TV, IGTV, because I don't know how to load it on without doing a live lesson, right? Okay, so we're going to start with our prayers as we always do. We'll start with We Are Drops. You can help me, right? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Yeah. I'll sing it first, and then you can sing it with Kelsey. Ready? Uh -huh. We are drops. Of one ocean. No, no, you say we are drops. We are drops. Let's start again. <gasps> we are drops. We, we are, are drops, drops of one ocean. Of one ocean. We are waves. We are waves. Of one sea. Of one sea. Come and join us. Come and join us. In our quest for unity. It's a way of life for you and me. We are, we are flowers of one garden. Of one garden. We, are we are leaves of one tree. Of one tree. Come and join us, come, come and join us in our quest for unity. It's a way of life for you and me. All the world, All the world is one country. Man is one. Man is one. Can't you see? Can't you see? Come and join us, come, come and join us in our quest for unity. It's a way of life for you and me. Did you sing that with us? I hope you did. Yay! Thank you for your help. Okay, now we're gonna sing Oh God Guide Me. How do we start Oh God Guide Me? What do we do with our fingers? Oh God. We put it up in the sky, right? Okay, here we go. Hold on. Get your fingers up. Oh God, oh God guide me. Protect me, make of me a shining lamp and a brilliant star. Thou art the mighty and the powerful. Let's do it again. Oh God, guide me, protect me, make of me a shining lamp and a brilliant star. Thou art the mighty and the powerful. <laughs> and now how about so, so powerful? Get your muscles. Let me see your muscles. Let me see those muscles. Let me see them. Let me see your strong muscles. Show me, show me, show me your strong muscles. Come on, help me out. Are you gonna do it with me or not? Yeah. Okay. So, so powerful, so, so powerful. It's a light of unity. So, so powerful, so, so powerful. It's a light of unity that it can illuminate the whole earth that it can illuminate the whole the whole earth the whole earth okay let's sing blesses the spot and then we'll talk about our virtue for today okay okay so blesses the spot we start with our thumbs on our lips right um, and there are so many different versions. I've been listening to the one by Luke Slot, but um, I think we'll sing the one that we normally sing on here. And then at some point we'll transition over the one that Luke Slot has done because it's so beautiful. So here you go. Um, we're gonna sing the one that goes, blessed is the spot and the house and the place. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Blessed is the spot and the house and the place and the city and the heart and the mountain, and the refuge, and the cave, and the valley, and the land, and the sea, oops, and the sea, and the island, and the meadow, where mention of God hath been made, and his praise glorified. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's my son over there making noise. Hey, Parker. Hey. <laughs> today we're talking about gentleness. And our virtue today says, I mean, our quote today. Hey, Parker. Parker. Hey. 
You're gonna be loud. Can you walk away a little bit? Okay, sorry guys. Okay, here's what it says. You know what? I'm wondering if this is actually not gonna be flipped. Kelsey, run inside and get the other one that's on the table. Okay. Because normally we do it on Instagram and I have to flip it. So it looks right now like it's the right way. But I'm not sure what'll happen when I stop filming it. So I'm gonna show you this one first and then she's gonna get me the original that we, before we flipped it. The quote today goes, love and affinity are the fruits of a gentle disposition, a pure nature, and a praiseworthy character. Now let's go through what that all means. I'm hoping she'll come back here real quick because I'm not even sure which way is the right way for this. So love and affinity. So we know what love is, right? We've talked about love in our other uh, virtue classes. It's caring deeply for somebody, um, wanting what's best for them, caring for them. Here she comes, come on, quick, quick, quick. But the word affinity, do you know what affinity means? This word here, affinity. May I have that one, please? Let's see, this is gonna look like, I'm hoping this is the right way. Okay, love and affinity. Affinity means you, you naturally like somebody. Love and affinity are the fruits of a gentle disposition, a pure nature, and a praiseworthy character. So love and affinity, natural liking and love, are the fruits of a gentle disposition. Disposition means um, your inherent personality or the way that you act and treat other people, like your your character or your personality or your it's your disposition, the way you, you naturally are. A pure nature means unsullied, right? If you're pure, we talk about pure, kindly, and radiant hearts and how we get those through our virtues. And a praiseworthy character, which is also, praiseworthy character comes from exemplifying these wonderful virtues and building up these wonderful wonderful virtues within yourself. So Abdul Baha is basically saying that um, if you work on having a gentle disposition, a pure nature, and a praiseworthy character, love and affinity are the fruits of that. It, you will like be, have... Like be careful with animals. Yeah, like be gentle with animals. So we're talking about gentleness today. And... Um, we're talking about a gentle disposition. It's how we treat other people. It's how we treat animals. It's how we treat nature. Um, and to be gentle can be, we can be gentle in a physical way. Like this is being gentle. This is not being gentle, right? But you can also be gentle and need to be gentle in the way that we treat other people and how we talk to other people um, and animals. So that's what we're gonna do today. So before we do that, I wanted to show you an example. I have these two apples here. Kelsey's gonna help me out with this. This apple, we're going to say really kind and wonderful and gentle things to. It's like hard. Yeah, it's, oh, no. No, they're the same apple right now. But we're gonna say kind things to this apple and we're gonna say things in a gentle way to this apple. And we're gonna say mean things to this apple and we're gonna be unkind to this apple and we're gonna be rough with this apple verbally, okay? So Kelsey, why don't you start with that one? Let's say some kind things to it. I like apples. How about we say, you are so sweet. You are so gentle. I love the way that you taste when I eat you. And you're um, smooth. You are smooth. It's okay if you do things wrong sometimes. We're all learning, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Or, it, um, it's okay that you knocked over my toys. I can rebuild it, right? It's okay that you knocked over Mary's tower. Okay, and this one we're gonna say kind of more hurtful things too. We're gonna say, I hate you. You're such a rotten apple. Why are you always so full of anger? And juice. And juice. And I wish you would be um, more fun to be around. I don't like the taste of apples. Mm. Now, th these apples look very similar, right? The outside, they, um, they're both kind of shiny. They both have reds to them, right? But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut these apples up and see if our hurtful words had any effect on the inside of these apples. I uh -huh. Okay, go play. What apples should we cut up first? We're gonna cut up this apple first. This is the one that we are being very kind to. And let's see what happens when we cut the inside of this apple. Okay. I'm gonna cut it up. Okay. And then we're gonna eat it. Oh, but the inside, we were very kind to this apple. And look how, 
clean. The inside of that apple looks so good, right? No bruises, nothing. Now this is the apple that we were saying hurtful things to and it looked like it was fine. But let's see what happens when we cut up this apple. If this is a person and you're saying mean things to it, they may seem like they're okay. But let's see what the inside looks like. You see this? You see it all bruised up. You couldn't tell from the outside, but compared to this apple, this one's starting to get soft and squishy on the inside. Let me cut it this way and see if it... Yeah, it's starting to get all bruised up. You see? See how soft this is? So even if we say hurtful things to someone and it might not seem like it's affecting them or hurting them or... Okay. Um, they might seem like they're still strong on the outside. It can have a very detrimental effect to the inside like, of somebody's like body and this, spirit. Like this one's um, not so tough, and this one's the tough one. Yeah, yeah. That one we took good care of. You may eat this if you'd like. Ooh! Apples. Okay, I'm gonna read you two stories. The two stories I'm reading today, where are the books, honey? Are Bog Baby and Alfie. Now the first one I'm gonna read is Alfie. It's about a little girl who gets a turtle for her birthday. Um, and we and we get to hear about the girls, from the girl's point of view and from the turtle's point of view, okay? So let's start. I'm gonna take off the dust jacket. And I wanna show you something very important. I really like this book. I like it too. This turtle has a balloon with a six over it. On the back, this turtle has a balloon with an eight over it. Let's see why that is. Alfie, the turtle that disappeared. It's by um, Thyra Heater. Hater. On my sixth birthday, I got Alfie. You see how she has a balloon with a six? I named him Alfie. The lady at the store said he looked about six too. We were six together. At home on my carpet, he stood very still. There she is, about to take him home, sitting on her carpet. Go carpet. I introduced him to everyone, all of her stuffed animals and toys. I taught him my wiggly dance and made him presents, but he didn't seem to notice. I showed him my costumes and wrote him songs. Mostly, he stayed inside his shell. She decorated his cage, she's entertaining him. He's trying to make his cage a home that he wants to be in. Every day I told him stories like how Dasha got new overalls and how Ruth lost a tooth and how Peter from downstairs got a fish. I even told him my best joke about the walrus wearing pants, but he didn't seem to get it. <laughs> After a while, I kind of forgot about Alfie. He didn't do much. Well, until the morning of my seventh birthday, when see, he's off in the corner, he disappeared. Oh no, where did Alfie go? See dun, the balloon, dun, it says dun. seven. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so that was, that was her point of view. Now we're gonna hear about Alfie's point of view. So this is Naya. When I first saw Naya, I knew she was special. Look at them looking at each other. Freshwater turtle, it says. She told me that I was six. Not yet, Kelsey, hold on. And she was six too. I had never been six before, but I was happy we were six together. Her home tickled my toes, but she smelled nice, so I was calm. Remember when she was on the carpet with him and she said he didn't move very much? He was saying she smells nice, so he feels nice and calm. Hold on, Kelsey, we'll show it in a minute. She had tons of friends. Look at all those stuffed animals and toys. Naya taught me to dance. I practiced wiggling inside my shell. She gave me presents. I had never been given presents. She's being so kind and gentle with him, right? He seems like a very happy turtle. Look at his smile. She made me laugh and laugh and laugh. Does it look like he's laughing? No. It does if you're a turtle. How could I make her as happy as she made me? I had to think. Look at all those beautiful ways she decorated the outside of his uh, his um, aquarium. Did you see the nut? 
Will we press pants? Hmm, <laughs> it's funny. And think and think. She's trying to think of how to make her happy. Naya was planning her seventh birthday. She told me we were going to be seven together. I had to find her a present. Uh-oh. Look at how he's getting out. Look at all those balloons with sevens. That's probably um, a great way to get out. Yeah, probably. It worked. There were some good options behind the couch, but they were too dusty. I looked at all the corners and shadows and cracks and found some great places, but no great presents. I asked Toby and he said, Toby's the dog, and he said, you should try outside, outside is the best, outside is the best, get her sick, outside is the best. <laughs> Toby likes outside, huh? All right, so here's Toby up here. Here's Alfie on the top of the, uh, the building going down the fire escape. I had never been outside before. I climbed past stinky things and sw sweet things, but nothing as fun as Naya. I had to keep looking. He's going down the stairs. Going down, down, down. Looks like a mountain. Oh, looks like he fell in the leaves. Oh. I had to take a risk. Now look at this. I want you to notice something. There's a jack-o'-lantern back here, and there are leaves here, which means what time of year do you think it is? Mm. It's the fall, mm. right around Hall Halloween, right? That's when, they're, when we have jack-o'-lanterns. I crunched through reds and oranges and yellows, but the longer I looked for a special one, the browner they got. I found a nice blue cap, but it was too small for Naya's head. <laughs> Look, he's wearing it on his head. There was nothing in the desert. Where do you think the desert is? <laughs> sandbox. The sandbox. My toes were cold and my heart was sad. I would never find a present as special as my friend. This snail said all I needed was a good rest. Looks like it's raining and getting kind of cold. And look at the pumpkin back here. You know when you when you carve a pumpkin and it starts to rot and it gets all squishy oh. and it collapses on itself. And so look, there's snow now. Okay. He knew the perfect place for me to take a nap. Just over those stones, he said. Get it? The snails talk slowly. Yeah, so do <laughs> And so do turtles. So I napped. He's in here sleeping. He's hibernating. That's what turtles do in the winter time. Mm -hmm. And napped and napped. Okay, so there's a lot of snow here. And then the snow all melted. Look, and she's starting to plant seeds. So it must be fall, right? When I woke up, I felt better. I asked the fish for help, and she showed me the things that I had that had fallen to the bottom. It took, and then I saw it. It was perfect. It looked just like something Naya would love. What did he find? A little turtle keychain. What? Hmm. I can't hear you in that ear. <laughs> I can't hear out of my left ear. I had to rush the party. Oh, 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 I see. Okay. I had to rush the party. When I finally got over the rocks, the snail said, that was fast. I was right on time. Look, they got to her birthday party. And what's he carrying on his back? The current turtle keychain for her. Oh. But hold on a second. Look at this. Okay. <gasps> I could tell Naya was very surprised and happy. I had brought her the perfect present. Now we were seven together. No! But oh, wait a minute, she's holding a balloon that says eight. Eight! It took him an entire year to and find. I thought it was just one day. You thought it was one day, but it was it was an entire year. And look how happy she is to have found him. They're so loving and gentle with each other, right? They're good friends. And took him a one whole year to just go through the, to just get into the back of your back. Right, so that's why it says six on the front because they were six together. And it says eight on the back because he was looking for a birthday present for her seventh <laughs> birthday, but it took an entire year. And there's one other thing I wanna show you at the beginning of this book. 
At the beginning of this book, when she goes and picks out Alfie, you see what's on her backpack? You see it? It's a turtle keychain. Maybe the one that uh, Alfie ends up finding for her, huh? Okay, so yeah. the next book we're gonna read is called Bog Baby. And then after that, I thought maybe we could either, we can make a, you could either make a turtle or you can make a bog baby of your own and then make a home for them. And as an example of how we can treat animals and people with kindness. So let's read the last book, which is Bog Baby. And then Kelsey's gonna help me um, show you guys how to make either a bog baby or a turtle. Which one do you want to make? Um, what one do they want to do? Either one. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe a turtle or a bog baby. Can I show them both? Where is the other book, Kelsey? Oh, it's right behind me. Okay. Here Can we go. I show them both? You, yeah, we'll, we'll do it afterwards, okay? A turtle, turtle Kelsey made. Bog baby. Or a little bog baby. So they don't know what a bog baby is yet. We have to, we have to read this. <gasps> Here we go, The Bog Baby by Jean Willis. We've read this book a lot in our virtue classes. Um, it's a great book for compassion or gentleness or kindness or what else? Honesty, <laughs> and you'll see why. Here we go, The Bog Baby. Oh, and, um, gentleness. Gentleness, yes. Long ago, when we were little, me and Chrissy did something bad. We said we were going to Annie's house to play, but we didn't. What did they do instead? Let's take a look. We went fishing all by ourselves, which wasn't allowed. Chrissy said there was a magic pond in Bluebell Wood. It was only ever there in spring. When it rained, it made a huge puddle in the dell and pond creatures came. We could fish for news, she said. I won't tell if you won't. So we went. Oh, look how beautiful all that is. But they're not supposed to be there on their own, are they? It's not safe. I love the illustrations in this book. We found the pond. It was squelchy all around the edge. The bluebells squeaked under our boots. We fished and fished, but we didn't catch a newt. We caught something much better. We caught a bog baby. What is a bog baby? He was the size of a frog, only round and blue. He had boggly eyes and a spiky tail, and I do remember he had ears like a mouse. He came swinging through the flower stalks and jumped into the water. He floated up and down on his back and sucked his toes. He looks adorable. That's when I fished him out. He didn't struggle. He sat in my hand and looked surprised. He was as soft as jelly. When we stroked him, he flapped his wings. They were no bigger than daisy petals. They seemed too small for him to fly. Chrissy said he might be able to fly if we blew on his wings. We blew and blew, but all we did was blow him into the mud. He didn't try to escape. He just sat still with his paws over his eyes. Oh no, you think he's afraid maybe? They're not being very gentle with him. We put him in a jam jar, took him home, and hid him in the shed. He was our bog baby. He wasn't meant to be a secret. We wanted to show mom, but we didn't dare. If we did, she knew we would, if, if we did, she'd know we didn't go to Annie's. Uh-oh, they're keeping it from their mommy. We made our bog baby a beautiful home in a bucket gravel, shells, clean water. Whenever he saw us, he jumped up and down. We picked him up and played with him. He was very ticklish. We fed him cake crumbs. He loved, we loved our bog baby. There he is in the little home they made for him. But the thing is, sometimes wild creatures are not meant to be kept in cages, right? Our friends loved him too. We sneaked him into school in a margarine tub. When the teacher wasn't looking, he played in the sandbox. In the afternoon, he slept in his tub on some damp cotton balls. Chris made him a collar and leash, and we took him for walks in the field. Once, a crow almost ate him, but we scared it away just in time. We took great care of our bog baby. He didn't jump up and down anymore. 
He turned pale and his wings drooped. He wouldn't touch his cake crumbs. We gave him all sorts, but he spat them out. We wanted to ask mom for help, but we didn't dare because of Annie. But the bog baby got thinner. He wouldn't walk on his leash. He hid under his shell. He wouldn't come out no matter how much we loved him. See him under there? He looks very sad. Mom found us in the shed. Chrissy wouldn't say why we were crying. We'd promise not to tell, but I blabbed. Mom wasn't angry though. When she saw who was in the bucket, she smiled and her eyes went misty. She says she hadn't seen a bog baby since she, since she was little. Please make him better, we cried. We love him so much. I know, she said. But the bog baby is a wild thing. He doesn't belong here. He isn't meant to eat cake or walk on a leash or sleep in a tub. Kelsey. She picked up the bucket and we followed her out. We're going back to where the bog baby lives. If we really loved the bog baby, we had to do what was best for him, no matter how much it hurt us. That was real love. That's why we let him go. Hold on, sweetheart. Back where he belonged, living in the woods, playing in the pond, sleeping in the damp leaves under the moon. We never saw him again. I think he grew up and had babies of his own. Last spring, my daughter found the magic pond and guess what she saw? Kelsey, stop. Hundreds of bog babies swinging through the bluebells, catching flies, floating on their backs, sucking their toes. That's what she told me, and that's what I believe. Hmm. A hundred! Right. So they found this bog baby, and they were a little rough with it at first, huh? They were blowing on it, trying to get it to fly away, and it hit and hit its face, and then they put it in a cage, uh, a tank. They made a beautiful home for it, but it wasn't the right kind of home for a bog baby. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, create either a bog baby. Do you see Kelsey made little toes? Because they <laughs> suck on their toes. And wings. She gave it eyes and a mouth and a little tail. Um, inspired by the picture of the bog baby that we have here. You see, it looks kind of similar, right? Yeah. Um, so she's going to teach you how to make a bog baby. She also created a turtle to be kind of like Alfie. So you, if you'd like, can make a turtle Aww. or you can make a bog baby. And then we, um, we came outside and we made some little homes that we thought maybe a bog baby would want to live in yeah. or a turtle would want to live in. Now we are going to make a home. So I thought you could teach them how to make the bog baby first. I think I and then we'll let them make their home on, the, on their own. So Kelsey's gonna teach you how to make the bog baby and then I'm just gonna show you how we made a home for the bog baby earlier. My son and I made it together for the turtle and the bog baby. And, and you can do something them. similar or you can do something different. Also, if you don't have clay, you're welcome to draw a bog baby or a turtle or draw a home for them. Oh, um, you can use, you can make them out of anything. Or you can make them out of air dry clay or Play-Doh or anything you can find around your house, really. Yeah. Okay, so Kelsey, why don't you come on over here and I'm gonna tilt this down. I'm gonna have her draw on our Alfie book, actually. You mean clay model. I'm gonna model some clay. Okay, so you're gonna model some clay right here for us. I'm not sure how to tilt this down because we're filming sideways, so I might have to just hold it. Yes, I'm just gonna hold it. So Kelsey, why don't you come sit down? I'm getting the cream. Okay, sorry guys, I'm still figuring this out. So I'm gonna put it down like this and I'm gonna let Kelsey work on right here. Okay, you wanna sit here, sweetheart? Okay, I got the bog baby. What, honey? Cool. Talk nice and loud so they can hear you, okay? Here is our bog baby. You put your bog baby right here, maybe? For today, and then I'm getting out the color, but like a palish blue. But you can make them any color you want. I made mine like a greenish blue. 
So, so what are you starting with? What shape? I like to start with like, like a roundish oval. A roundish oval, okay. So I'll make it, I'll make it also along with you, okay? Yeah, like a roundish oval. Okay. Like, but don't use all of it, just tell me. Um, a roundish oval. Here's my roundish oval. And now. I'm rolling it into a ball. Roll it into a ball, then roll it a little bit. Okay. Parker, come here, honey. Okay. Then. Okay, then what? And then I like to go onto the hands. Okay, so now we make the hands. So you're going to take a little bit more, and then what? Parker, come here, please. How do you make the hands? Like, you can roll a piece of clay out and then flatten it. Flatten it, okay. Then what? And then if you want, you can like make Are you pinching the hands, the fingers? I like to stick my nail into it. Now you're sticking your nail into it? I pinched the fingers to make the hands like this. Oh. Okay, so okay. what are we doing? Is it part of the, we're, we're giving the it an hands. arm too? And then widen it out a little. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, here's oh, one no. hand. You made a hand? Okay. My baby. And then a second baby hand, right? Had, yes, sweetie. Had a little power. And how, yeah, a second hand. Okay, there's my second hand. Two little hands. Two little hands. I don't want you. We're not buying these out right now. Okay, now what? And now attach okay. the other hand. When you attach the other hand, now you could do your feet. Okay, you work on this. I'm going to go uh, work with your brother real quick. Can okay. you teach them how to make the feet? Talk nice and loud so they can yeah. hear you, okay? Like make a circle and then I like to pinch it. Pinch it. And then flatten it. Flatten it again. And then make the other foot. But it's throwing a tantrum, so I'm all in the oven. But after you make that as a foot, after you make that as a foot that I am working on right now. You can make, let me see my book, baby. Take um a different color. I like to use red or pink that I'm getting right now. Here it is. And I'm coming back. And now I am going to... Take a little bit and then roll it out. Take a tiny little bit, roll it out, and then attach it on. See, this is what I have so far. Oh, you can make your baby, bug baby smiling or just. Okay, what are you working on? The mouth? Mm -hmm. Did you do the feet yet? Yep. Oh, okay. Can I use a little bit of this for my mouth? Sure. Okay, let's move this out of the way. Oh, so you they... need your feet, Mommy. Oh, I need feet. Yeah, I need feet, huh? All right. Because they like to suck on the toes. They like to suck on their toes? Uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. so I guess I need another foot here. Another foot, another foot. Here. Okay, what are you working on next? 
And now we're gonna work on the eyes. There's one foot. How many toes does your guy have? Um. Does he have three toes or more? He only has three toes. Oh, cute. Just so you know. Okay, here my here's my other foot. Mm-hmm. And now Okay. Time to Now I need make a smiley mouth, right? The eyes. The eyeballs. There's a smiley mouth. I guess you can make it smiling or frowning or sad or happy. Yeah, you can make it however you want the eyes to be. Okay. Need some white. I have it. You got it? Okay, just, we don't need that much. I know. I just don't want to get this all yucky in case we want to use it again. The white is okay, so the... we're going to do the eye, the eyeball first and then the, the iris, right? Yeah. Or the pupil. Yeah. What I like to do is start with the white, roll it into a good shaped ball but very very small okay. so flatten it flatten it on the bog baby no, or before you put it on the bog baby before you put it on the bog baby so if it's too big then you can rearrange it oh okay that's a good idea here are my two bog baby's eyes <laughs> okay and then add the other eye so i guess you can make the pupil any color you want, right? Uh huh. Are you gonna do black or are you gonna do a different color? This time I might do a different color. Okay. Hmm. I might do a like a greenish, like a light turquoise green. Okay. I'm gonna do a turquoisey dog baby green. But okay. Can, but you can make your eyes however you want. Okay. Like whatever color. Can you sit I'm gonna do black. Black, okay. But you want the pupil to be smaller than the white part. Yes, good instruction there. There we go. So the There's my little bog baby. Yeah. He's kind of cute. Oh, well, you forgot one more thing. The wings, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, you tell me. You tell me what we're doing next. And now, you can make the wings whatever color you Uh-oh. No, no, your bog baby rolled off into the dirt. Where, where is it? Where it's is okay, it? he's from nature. <laughs> okay, what color wings are you doing? And now, the color wings, I usually like to do like a tiny white, but you can do whatever colors you want. Okay. Um, I'm gonna do this light pink color. But that's like a tiny white. I don't want to, yeah, this is enough. Do you need more than this? No, I'm trying to get past the pink. Oh, I see, you don't want the pink part? Uh-huh, so I squeeze I it. I wanna be able to close this up again so we can reuse it. There you go. Thank you. Oh no, the pink is in the middle, Kelsey. Ah! Just mix it together, it's How okay. How did I get them? I don't know. Duh. Okay, so then how do we make the wings? What I usually like to do is roll them out into a thin but not too thin circle. A thin but not too thin circle? circle or like a snake? Oh, like a snake. Okay, kinda. like a little snake. Oh, no, no. Okay. And then and then what? You can attach it onto your bog baby. Oh. Or, okay. You right. can. Are you going to construct the wings ahead of time and then put it on your bog baby? Or are you going to do it all? You, they get to choose on that. But what are you, What? Are, how are you going to do it? I'm just asking how you're going to do it. I like to take it. I like to do construct the wings and then put them on. And then on. put them on. That's what I'm going to do too. So, what do you think about these wings? And then roll out some snakeish ones, but not wiggly, and then flatten them. And now... Oh, I see. 
Okay, Pop so you roll it into a snake like this. Three. Then you roll three more, right? And flatten them. Uh -huh. And you stick it to the first one. This takes some dexterity, guys. What? Dexterity. What is dexterity? It means like nimbleness in your fingers. I have that. I'm going to do five. I know you do. You absolutely do. My dexterity is getting worse as I get older, I think. <laughs> okay, I did five to make this wing. What do you think about that? That's another wing. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. He's got his two wings. So cute. Little bog baby. Yeah, I think some of the wing, from, oh. from this wing, I think he has You been, think he needs some more on that side? Uh, no, I think he has been through a lot of fighting. Oh, he got it. He lost a couple of his wings. Yeah, now. like crabs do. Yeah, crabs sometimes lose their legs, right? Yeah. All right, I'm going to add a few more to this We're side. in Maine, so that's why we picked up crabs. We're in Maine, and we've been catching crabs. Yeah. And then releasing them, right? We don't hold on to them. Oh, no, his wing got stuck on his body. All right, there's my oh. little bog baby. It can be covering him. Oh, yeah, they, he can use it to cover his eyes, right? Um, so this was Kelsey's original bog baby. Yeah. Oh, you know what you're forgetting, Kels? What? One more thing. His tail. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I forgot the tail. Oh, guys, I like to do the tail at the very end. Okay. So how to make a tail Yes. is like roll a thing, kind of like the wing starting point. Um, so into like roll, a little snake? Yeah, but not... A little shorter? No, a little bit longer than that. Okay. And then roll it out. As the, you want the end to get more narrow, and then attach Not it. Not that guy. That's your old guy. Oops. This is your new one. <laughs> and then attach it onto your bug baby. Okay. And then make a little triangle. Let me see if I I'm can. I'm looking on the tree. So roll it into a snake, a little bit longer than the wings. And then what'd you do? You made a triangle for the, the his tail? Yep. I'm gonna make a little triangle here by pinching two different directions and then sticking it on the tail. You right? might wanna make it a little wiggly. You're gonna make it wiggly. So let me show them how you did that. So she kind of made it wiggly by making it into an S shape. Make it a little wiggly. And then we put it on the back of the tail, wrapping around, right, Kels? Yep. And there's our bug baby. There's Kels. our bog baby. Here we have three bog babies. Now let's move them back a little bit so they can see better. So here we go. We have our three bog babies. And now the bog babies can ride on the turtle. <laughs> or you guys can make a turtle. Or you can make any critter you want as long as it's a representation of how to be gentle and kind and caring to living creatures and people. Yeah. I'm going to take you right over here real quick and show you the bog baby home that my son and I made earlier today. Uh. Here we go. Can I stop one? So over here. And now I am going to start one. You may start one, but we're going to turn this off because it's getting kind of long. We collected some stones that we found in our driveway and some flowers that were found in the garden. And um, Parker and I constructed this little bog baby home. Kelsey, can you hand me one of the bog babies? Or the turtle. It could be a turtle home too. Can you hand me one of the bog babies or turtles? Um, whatever one you decided to make. And you guys can make these homes in your backyard. You can make them at the beach if you happen to be at the beach. You can make them from things you find in your house. You can make them from blocks if you'd like. Here's our little turtle home. And the bog baby. And our little bog baby visitor. Hello, can I please come in? Yes, me. Would you like a tap, cup of tea? Okay, everybody. Right? Thank you for joining us this week. I'm sorry it's a little bit different than um, our previous weeks. We are heading up north, so we will be missing you on Sunday. But um, I'm yeah, hoping we... to be back by next Sunday. Kelsey may or may not be with me. Probably not. We'll probably be back to our normal um, Instagram live. That I do not like. As okay. you know, you can find all of our videos on YouTube, The High Virtue Class. Um, and okay. I will also post the books that we read today Goodbye. in our in our um, Google uh, uh, Google document. Oh, and now we say goodbye, which is on our meow, link meow. tree. 
profile. So we love you all. Have a great rest of your week. Kelsey. <laughs> and we'll see you soon. You say bye? Bye.